Welcome to the Renaissance and welcome to Awakening for Negroes Part 1. And this very important notice that it is never our intention to offend anyone with our videos. It's not also our intention to suggest, insinuate or preach hate towards any group, race, tribe or person. There is also no propaganda or any deliberate attempt to misinform anyone with our videos. Please look for the books, journals, magazines or other publications or sources referenced and study them yourself. Remember, the Negro King desired to be portrayed as white, but do not laugh at the poor African, for every man is but another Negro King and would like to appear in a color different from that which fate has bedubbed him, Heinrich Hain, and from Walter Rodney. But what standard of morality can the violence used by a slave to break his chains be considered the same as the violence of a slave master? Before we continue, please remember we make our propositions based on history, especially the slave trade. We do not mind if you labeled us insane or conspiracy theorists. We would be happy if our ability to expose the slave masters and their foot soldiers and it stopped them from their evil plans. Please find time to conduct your own research beyond what you see on TV, whether from Italy or from the United States. Find time to conduct your own research. Flashback. Remember, we emphasized on focusing on the foot soldiers as they are the weak link in the slave master's chain and that the Nigerian government bringing Chinese so-called medical team was because the slave hunters were in power and ultimately they will stigmatize Negroes with this virus using their brainless foot soldiers. Remember these are things we have told you in the past and that the slave master hides behind his foot soldiers to be perpetuating all these atrocities against the Negroes. Outrageous proposition. What if we told you that this whole lockdown is targeted? You will likely dismiss us because you are working with more belief than facts. You may also try to know who is the target and why. Have you imagined how the slave trade was exclusive to Negroes but not other blacks? and how the target is Southern Nigeria and Southern Cameroon and that is Biafra and Ambazonia. So do you remember trade by butter and you remember Manilas and you remember cowries then you remember coins and then you remember paper money and now go into cryptocurrency like bitcoins. Have you wondered how they always determined what money we used? So without dwelling much on the money issue until we get to something like capitalism. Still looking at Biafra and Ambazonia, if oil is coming to an end, could you try to do an analysis or develop a mental picture of how these companies impact the slave master's economy? Royal Dutch Shell, Halliburton, Slumbeji, Toto, Ajip, Saipem, Baker Hughes, ExxonMobil, Webros, ConocoPhillips, etc. So you have to remember that all these companies are milking these areas mentioned and they can only do that through their brainless foot soldiers, the same way they did as slave hunters back in the days. So if you complain about the environment, it is the foot soldiers that will come to kill you. You need to understand it. So that's why we are telling you almost to a 99% accuracy that the target are those areas, the background. Have you imagined that something like the slave trade happened over a very long period of time, something as much as 400 years, and that is destroying lives and properties for over 400 years, and today we are going back and forth as to who did, when, how, and who could have been the victims and who was not. Have you wondered how they could have been able to pull that off? Remember, between that 400 years, there were changes in leadership, there were changes in presidents, 
there were changes in prime ministers, there were changes in practically everything. How do you think it could have lasted for such a very long time and today no one is able to say exactly who did, who the victims were or who they were not and what could have actually transpired. It is in the light of that that we normally start our presentations with a little account of some history to give you an idea of what to look out for. So we reference an account of the slave trade on the coast of Africa by Alexander Falconridge, late sojourn in the African trade and this was published in 1788 and there we are shown that the sojourn upon going between decks in the morning to examine the situation of the slaves frequently finds several dead and among the men sometimes a dead and living negro fastened by their irons together. When this is the case, they are brought upon the deck and being laid on the grating, the living negro is disengaged and the dead one thrown overboard. It may not be improper here to remark that the surgeons employed in the guinea trade are generally driven to engage in so disagreeable an employ by the confined state of their finances. An exertion of the greatest skill and attention could afford the diseased negroes little relief so long as the causes of their diseases, namely the breeding of a putrid atmosphere and wallowing in their own excrements remain. When once the fever and dysentery get to any height at sea, a cure is scarcely ever effected. So we will suggest you read this over and over again and try to compare it with the Chinese being invited by the Nigerian state while the same Chinese were shown to be oppressing the same Negroes. Our interest is the fact that you may have heard how Africans sold other Africans but then you are wondering how the Nigerian government would be inviting the Chinese with an airplane supposedly owned by a Nigerian. Remember Nigeria doesn't have a national carrier because of bad government as well because the slave hunters are still in power they lack the ability to manage but their inadequacies their mediocrity their heartlessness their brutality their man seeing humanity to man rubs off on the negroes who you see scattered all over the world because you will notice that those who are in power there you will never see in that chinese situation where someone else will be oppressing them they will either be diplomats or they will come in with the money the colored paper paid to them by the slave masters and pay for any houses they want. They don't work. They rarely do anything useful. That's why you can't see any creative thing or innovation from them. So you just need to do a little work to understand why someone else will be suffering or his siblings suffering all over the world looking for money, looking for little morsel of bread to keep the life in them. But other people, other countries, other races are being invited to the same place they left from to come and make money to come and enjoy and you are telling us that or you somehow believe that those in power are the same with those that are suffering all over the world remember you were told that the african kings were selling their own people so if we assume but without conceding that you can actually sell a man an able-bodied man he stands there waiting for you to sell him so we can easily see that those African kings of those days have somehow been replaced by their presidents, their armies and their military or any other powers they may have today. So the question becomes what their leaders are doing today? How is it different from the so-called African kings? Remember they never give you the names of those African kings. So those leaders there today, what is the difference between what they are doing and what those so-called African kings were doing. You notice that in all cases, they find a way to get the Negroes to come and be slaves wherever they wanted them to be. It doesn't matter whether it's China, the United States, Europe, or the Middle East. The important thing is that the Negroes are there. So, to better understand that the Negroes couldn't have been the same selling themselves, the same way their leaders couldn't have been the same with them today, let us reference observations on the slave trade and a description of some part of the coast of Guinea during a voyage made in 1787 
1788 in company with Dr. A. Sperman and Captain Arrhenius by C. B. Wattstrom and this was published 1789 and there we are told that in exposing to the world the atrocious acts committed in that part of the globe to which I have been eyewitness, it is not improbable that both the nations and individuals who have countenanced them may consider the writer in the light of a spy and a divulger of those things which ought in honor to have been buried in silence. But if they can find no other appellation for the just and pure intentions of a friend to mankind who dares to expose crimes and cruelties which the abusers of human rights are guilty of, he then accounts it an honor in discharging the duty he owes to society to be esteemed as such. But let it be well observed that herein he speaks from a respect due only to truth with a view to expose wickedness and falsehood but not nations or individuals. So we want you to read this very well, read it a second time and a third time and at least use it to understand that even if you hadn't followed our videos before now, you will know that it was impossible for the Negroes to have done it to themselves. At least the same way you see that the so-called leaders in Africa today are not taking care of their people. That should tell you what could have transpired back then. Then all you need to do is to take hold of these eyewitness accounts and use it to look at what is happening there today. And going further, you see where it says, the unhappy captives, many of whom are people of distinction, such as princes, priests, and persons high in office, are conducted by the Mandingos in droves of 20, 30, or 40, chained together, either to Fort St. Joseph on the river Senegal or Niger, in the country of Galam or to places near the river Gambia. Our interest is for you to see that the captives were princes, priests, persons high in office. And remember at that time the Negroes were ruled by priests. So what you're telling us is that they were being sold by themselves. That's ideally what this would mean if you were to believe the idea that the African kings were selling their own people. It was an invader an outsider that came in and captured them because the invader wouldn't know the difference between the prince and the ordinary people he is bound to capture everyone as far as they were negroes so this should give you a little idea of how the so-called nigerians today who are mostly negroes will be evicted from their homes but then the oppressor is being flown as a king to their own place where the slave masters and his foot soldiers used their draconian economic policies to force most of them out of their natural habitation. Again, the author says, I should yet have thought myself justifiable in supposing that the wars among the Negroes originated in the slave trade, for in all the observations I have been able to make, and I went to the coast of Africa not with any commercial views but for the sole purpose of inquiry and observation, I have ever considered the Negroes as a quiet, inoffensive people, happy in themselves and in one another, enjoying the comforts of life without the intervention of toil and trouble. If therefore I had found wars among a people of such dispositions and so situated as to have no motive for them, I should certainly have set them down as having been excited for some diabolical purpose and for none so likely as for the prosecution of the slave trade. So at least we see clearly that it couldn't have been the Negroes selling themselves. At least these statements are clear enough because tomorrow you're gonna see the story will be that it was the same Negroes that could have sold themselves to the Chinese or sold their land or their places to the Chinese. Remember the governments there were the slave hunters of old. The slave master just hides behind them and they discuss as they normally used to and then they implement their draconian policies against the Negroes. And here you see how it plays out and it says, I am very sorry that humanity obliges me here to divulge a most barbarous practice frequently used by the French traders in the Middle Passage. I have been assured by several of their merchants and captains 
that when detained by calms or contrary winds, occasioning a shortness of provisions and water, or when some fatal disease happens to break out among the slaves, they never fail to mix corrosive sublimate or some other active poison with their victuals, and thus coolly dispatch the wretches committed to their charge. They affirm that it would be an act of imprudence to undertake such a voyage unprovided with poisonous drugs and they boast of being less cruel than the Dutch and the English who in similar circumstances throw the innocent victims overboard without ceremony. So you see that both are one and the same. Now you understand why the slave masters foot soldiers we welcome the vaccines. They will be the ones the slave master will route any vaccines through. They will be the ones they will bring any drugs through. It is why you see that they buy into any lie the slave master concoct against the Negroes. If you notice, they are not talking about their invitation of the Chinese. Other countries may have responded to a large extent. You can at least see how Ethiopia earlier this year or last year rather, conducted a referendum for Sidama or something like that. And you remember the slave masters media carried it all over the place. But remember, in Cameroon and in Nigeria, Biafra and Bosnia are things you can't even mention. You can't talk about referendum because the slave masters foot soldiers are active there. And remember the slave trade did not cover the entire Africa. Remember also that in our last video, we showed you that Africa was just a tiny portion around Tunisia. They now used it to cover the entire area. So we want you to look at these narratives to understand the slave master and his brainless foot soldiers and what they are going to be doing with this COVID-19 so you understand the game. So if you saw how they mixed poisonous substances in the food of the slaves and how they each carried it out, remember those countries till today you will see are the same ones that are against Biafra and Ambazonia. If you doubt what we're saying, conduct your research so it is through them that they are going to route their poisonous vaccines again to the same areas if you doubt what we're saying pay very close attention to what is going on there that's why we always told you to focus on their brainless foot soldiers if you wanted to know if this whole thing was a charade or a hoax just focus on their brainless foot soldiers they will give the game away Permit us to once again reference a history of all nations from the earliest periods to the present time or universal history in which the history of every nation, ancient and modern, is separately given and this was by S.G. Goodrich and it was published 1852 and there we are shown where Africa was at that time. So when you hear African African, you just need to bear in mind that when the slave trade started, the place wasn't called Africa. It tells us that the term Africa is derived from the Romans who first restricted it to the region occupied by Carthage but it was finally extended to the whole peninsula. Our interest is for you to understand how every name that the Negroes have anywhere is from the slave masters. So again remember the only way they can do it is through their brainless food soldiers. You see today they are both Nigerians with the slave hunters so the slave master still operates behind the slave hunters so that's why you see that while their people are being oppressed people are suffering people are dying of hunger they are still dancing to the tune of the slave masters and remember the whole world over the slave masters countries made provisions for their own people for the lockdown whereas their foot soldiers only sent the army to enforce the lockdown and ensure that people starve as much as possible. This is a planned game. You don't need to believe us, but you can at least pay very close attention to the activities and utterances of the slave masters foot soldiers, especially something like the Nigerian army, which was a slave hunting militia renamed Nigerian army in 1863. At least their activities should tell you all you need to know. And remember, somebody is behind deploying them there somebody is sending them there somebody gives them a rule of engagement somebody tells them what to do and remember somebody has to provide them with some pretext to be there and then they do look back in time you remember that when they told them about slaves they were going there to capture the slaves when it was palm oil or crude oil or coal or other minerals 
they were also used to protect the slave master's interest. When it became global warming, they used it to bring their cattle in order to murder innocent people. And today, they have given them another pretext, and that is the so-called virus. Now, remember, you have to look at the actions and reactions, the order out of chaos. You tell people to stay indoors, no provision for food. You know that the moment they get hungry, they will be forced to come out looking for food. Then the slave hunting army will massacre them and the excuse will be because we don't want the virus to spread. We don't want the virus to go from one person to another. So if you happen to be one of those wondering why are they doing it, what are their plans? Remember, they are foot soldiers. They lack humanity. They lack common sense. If you doubt what we're saying, a very simple way to look at this is to see the fact that the slave masters in their own countries made provisions for their own people. They paid money. They provided food. They did everything to make sure that people stayed alive during the lockdown, whereas these ones did not do any such thing. Are you telling us that if the Negroes were the same with them, they wouldn't have made provisions for them the same way they are making for places like northern Nigeria? That's a very simple question you can try to answer yourself. You can see how the police and army are busy killing innocent people in southern Nigeria that come out to look for food. All you need to do is to ask yourself, how come they are not doing the same in the north? They are still holding their Muslim prayers there, but in the south, they are killing people. The slave master knows that this is what they are going to do. They work with him. They planned it together. You can doubt us, but you are going to say it. So let us reference Negroes and Negro slavery, the first and inferior race, the letter its normal condition by J. H. Van Every, medical doctor, and this was published 1863. And there we are shown that the Almighty Creator in his infinite wisdom has provided against chance or accident or human caprice and placed each and every one of his works in a position of such absolute independence that one of them or more perhaps might utterly perish and yet the beauty and harmony of nature would remain unimpaired. Remember they never considered the Negroes as human and to tell you how brainless the foot soldiers are, you are looking at someone like you, another person gives you a gun to kill them because they are not humans, because they don't believe what you believe and you are doing it so you see why they were going to bring the Chinese and then their own people are suffering so you understand that it is not hidden or rather hidden in plain sight all you need to understand is that the people in power are not the same as the Negroes who are the targets of the slave masters man's inhumanity to man and here is the plan it says it is certain that some species of animals belonging to the existing other have utterly disappeared and it is quite probable that some species of men have perished but the grand economy of nature is unaffected by it it is thought that the aborigines of this continent will in time utterly perish and yet no one supposes that that event will disturb the oppressions of nature or deface the fair form of creation so you see how they see the existence of the Negroes in that area. We are going to show you, you don't need to believe us. You are going to even see it yourself. From the atrocities and activities of those people you think are leaders in places like Nigeria. That's all you need to look at. So now you understand that the whole plan is to totally terminate that race. It doesn't matter how you look at it. That's what they are going to do. That's what they are planning to do. And that's what they are doing. So that's why you see that. The brainless foot soldiers, because of their lack of humanity and common sense, which the slave master understands perfectly, but you don't understand it. So this is why you see that the so-called African Americans do not even understand where they could have been from. So they are more busy to claim, oh, we are aborigines, we are from there, we came from this, we moved from there and all that, claiming everywhere, but they have no place. Then you notice that the brainless foot soldiers will allow the vaccines. They will be the ones to help propagate the lies to their own people. If you looked at the dangers of those vaccines, just look at northern Nigeria. It is the capital of diseases in that sub-region. If you doubt what we're saying, read the historical records, read Bill Gates and his foundation and where they are focusing and you will understand what we're talking about. How can somebody be looking to treat you for a disease that is not there? And you would have noticed that top politicians, 
proclaimed first from the slave masters to his foot soldiers that they have contacted the so-called virus. If you looked at it very well, you'll see that the moment the slave masters in Europe claimed to have contacted the virus, their foot soldiers in Nigeria said or claimed the same. That's to make it believable. The entity is to claim that it is there, even if it's not there, so that they will have the justification to bring their vaccines, they will have the justification to deploy their military and their police, kill as many people as they want, because they know the slave master is hiding behind them. Nobody is going to try them for genocide. Nobody is going to condemn them. Their media will not report it either. So you just need to bear that in mind. So when you see those things on Facebook, if you told the slave masters, because they know the game they are playing, they will tell you it's fake news. They won't report it in their mainstream media. But their foot soldiers, because of their lack of humanity and common sense, simply forget that if that environment was healthy for others, it would be for them as well. But unfortunately, like we told you, believe it or not, they lack humanity. They lack common sense. Let us also reference narrative of travels and discoveries in Northern and Central Africa in the years 1822, 1823, and 1824 by Major Denham, Captain Clapperton, and the late Dr. Odney. And this was published 1827. And there we are shown that about sunset, we halted near a well within a half mile of Mishiro. Round this spot were lying more than 100 skeletons, some of them with the skin still remaining attached to the bones, not even a little sand thrown over them. The Arabs laughed heartily at my expression of horror and said they were only black. Nambo damned their fathers and began knocking about the limbs with the butt end of their firelocks, saying this was a woman, this was a youngster, and such like unfeeling expressions. The greater part of the unhappy people of whom these were the remains had formed the spoils of the Sultan of Fezan the year before. I was assured that they had left Borno with not above a quarter's allowance for each and that more died from want than fatigue. They were marched off with chains round their necks and legs. The most robust only arrived in Fezan in a very debilitated state and were there fattened for the Tripoli slave market. Our interest is for you to look at Bono today. You see that's where they claim their Boko Haram is happening. There is nothing like Boko Haram. That is an organized terror group. They use it to pitch the Negroes against an invisible army. So that's what you're saying. While you're thinking that there's actually a real war or there is a real Boko Haram or those people, they stage those things. They tell the armies where they are coming from and tell the so-called Boko Haram. Then they will announce to you that Boko Haram has killed these people. Even with their lockdown, has it stopped Boko Haram? The answer is no. So they are doing their thing. They think nobody knows. But everybody knows. They even have a different uniform for their group. That group, the Boko Haram people, they know it. That's what happens when you go to dine with the enemy. Dine with the devil with a short spoon. Remember, these were the slave hunters. So when a Negro joins that army, he thinks he wants to defend his fatherland without knowing that that's a death trap. A deal between the slave hunters of old and the slave master. So you again see why the same foot soldiers can murder you because of an Arab religion. Remember, it is the same people that were capturing and selling the Negroes to both the so-called Christians at that time and their fellow Arabs and Muslims too.